Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox Graphics and today we are going to create some abstract mesh art. So the guy that originally found this was Jason Zagrino. I came across it on Twitter and he shared with the public how he makes these kind of artworks of him, which look amazing. And I think it needs a lot more attention because it looks that good. Because of that I'm making this video, so let's get started. The system behind this is quite simple. First of all, we need an object of course. We can start off with a sphere object or a platonic object I would recommend. Let's go with the platonic one because it is a bit more angled and less perfect than a sphere. And now to turn this in some kind of mesh we can use the atom array and drag the platonic object under that atom array. And you can see this is giving us this mesh look already. Some kind of wireframe. But we have these spheres on here which don't look that nice. So let's go in the atom array options and we're going to decrease the sphere radius first of all. So something very small and the cylinder radius should go along with that. So now both of them are equally as big, which makes the spheres disappear. So now we have this basic object. We could make this a bit more complicated by adding some segments to this platonic object, but it will always stay the same shape and a bit boring if you ask me. So what we can do to make this a bit more complicated is creating a subdivision surface. And let's drag this under the atom array as well and place the platonic object inside of that. And you can already notice this is getting a bit more artistic. So we are three objects deep in the hierarchy. Let's go ahead and make this a bit deeper. So first of all we can use a bevel deformer and we can also use the smoothing deformer. The other ones will also help but they will not make the mesh that different. So let's stick with that. And we're going to drag both of them under the platonic object. But let's disable them for now because you can see this is just basically shrinking the object. Before we enable these we can add one more thing, which is the Mo Extrude object. This is the secret recipe of Jason Zagrino. So let's create this and drag it under the platonic object. And you can notice this is giving us some weird coils almost on the polygons. I don't like it that much. So what I did for my experiments is just decreasing this to just one step on the extrusions on basically all my experiments. So that looks nicer. If we disable this, you can see it is totally different. Now it is quite difficult to say what object is causing what kind of effect because it is mostly trying different things and seeing how it looks but I will try my best to go over some of these values and show you what the results are. So first of all we had this subdivision surface. So if we increase the number it is mostly giving a more condensed mesh inside of the polygons. So it is basically a way to make it more refined if you want to. I'm just going to stick with two subdivisions for now. Now we have the platonic object on its own. Here we can increase the segments and you can see every pattern gets repeated on every polygon like it was with the subdivision surface as well. But um, it gives a more complicated shape. So I like to keep this a bit more simple with just two segments. Otherwise it is getting a bit repetitive even. Now we have this Mo extrusion. You could remember what happened when we made more extrusions. So let's just keep this on one for now. And then we have the smoothing deformer. So let's enable this. And you can see the object is already shrinking because it is getting smoothed. We can also play around with the strength of course, but that is mostly changing the object size. But another interesting option is the stiffness. So I like to keep that at 0%. But there is one more important thing about this smoothing deformer. And actually all these deformers and objects inside of the platonic object which is that the order is really important. So if we make this smoothing deformer, the first one under the platonic object, we have a totally different result, which is quite interesting of course, but in this case it is shrinking the object way too much, so let's keep it as a second one. Now let's also try and see what happens if we just enable the bevel deformer. So this is giving a totally different result again because we are beveling the edges. So you can play around with this again. Um, you can play around with the component mode. For example, let's make a bevel on the points. This is giving a more complicated shape at these points. Um, we can also play around with the offset, of course. So this makes it more pointy. And also the subdivisions can be changed. But I have to warn you, don't go too crazy with this. Don't use the slider because if you go over, let's say, four subdivisions, it is getting really slow and it may even freeze Cinema 4D. So let's just go back to one of them. And you can also use the limit option. It will keep things more clean and contained. 
but it is also interesting if it is not limited. So to you it may still look a bit simple, and it really is, but there are so many different variations you can make. So let's go over some of these I've made. I've also included some more variations on our Patreon download page, so if you want to take a look at what I created, you can download these files there, but I will just go over four of these. Let's go with the first one, and the subdivisions can be the same, so two, but let's also make sure the subdivisions and the renderer are the same, otherwise the render will be different from what we are seeing right now. Now let's go to the platonic object, and um, the segments can stay the same, so two is just fine. Then we are going to make sure we have a MO extrude inside of here. And we are just going to use the bevel mode, which will be beveling on the edges. And let's decrease the size to just 10 centimeters. And the subdivisions can stay at 1. And this gives us this very clean look with deep extrusions inside of it, so that's nice. Let's continue with a second one. Um, for this one, it is basically the same, but we are going to disable the bevel deformer. And it almost looks like you're holding a leaf against the light. So for the third one it is a bit different. We are actually going to disable the subdivision surface and we are going to use six segments instead. So that's a bit more complicated but very rough. Let's keep the Mo extrude. And we are going to smooth this one. 100% and zero stiffness is just fine. And we are going to bevel this just one centimeter with zero subdivisions. So we get this circle pattern, which is totally different than the other ones we had. So you can see just very small tweaks in the values can give us very different results. Now for our last one, let's go and enable the subdivision surface again. Maybe a bit slow in this case. Let's keep it on two. The segments on this can be three of them. And let's keep the Mo extrusion and disable the smoothing again. And we're going to add a bevel on this, but this time let's do it on the points. And we're also going to make sure the offset is a bit bigger. And let's also add a subdivision on this. And this way we get this very pointy look, which is also looking nice. So I just recommend you experiment with this and see what you can come up with. But for now let's say we will just use this mesh artwork and we will continue with adding the lighting to this. Of course this can be anything you like, but let's just go with what I had going so you can get the same result. So first of all the material for the object is quite simple. On the color we are just going to make this pure white and if you want to you could add some kind of blue tone to this. It's not necessary but it is a bit more refined. And then under the reflectance channel we can bump up the specular strength all the way to 100 and we can also bump up the width of this because the lights are very thin and we need more reflections on these. Also an optional thing you could do is adding some color to the specular, but I wouldn't make this too strong. So let's drag this on the object. And now we can continue with the rest of this. So maybe we can already add a camera object. And we're going to reset all the values down here. So it is pointing straight towards the object. But you can notice it is inside of here. So let's go ahead and put this a bit more to the back. And let's look through it to see if it works. And it does. If yours is a bit too far away or still too close you can use this handle to zoom in and out directly from the center of the viewport so that way it is still very precise. What we can also do is enabling the physical renderer and when we enable that we have the options down here which gives us the option to enable the depth of field to this. So if we have that enabled we can go to the physical tab of the camera and let's say we will use an f-stop of just two. This will give us a nice blur towards the back because otherwise it will get very complicated because we can see the mesh from the front to the back. So let's use this blur in our advantage. Now for the lighting we will start off with an area light. Let's go outside of the camera view so it is a bit easier to move around. And let's move this in front of it and also a bit above it and rotate it downwards so it is pointing towards the object. And let's enable the shadow on this which will be a soft shadow. We are also going to decrease the intensity of this to something like 70%. Let's create a second light, which will just be the default light. We will have two different variations of this, but for now let's move this to the side. Let's say 500 centimeters, and do the same thing with the other one, but on the other direction. And we are going to select both of these, and use the rotate tool to rotate these around the object, because they started from the center. Let's do this something like just 20 degrees. That looks nice, I guess. 
So for the left one we are going to use a soft blue color. And for the right one we are going to do the opposite and use a more yellow or orange color. Let's also select both of them and raise these up a bit. Now a last light we need is one at the bottom, which will also be an area light. And let's rotate this of course, like this and put it under there. We are also going to add a soft shadow on all of these, so actually we can select all three lights at once and use the soft shadow on these. Um, this one can stay at this size, but maybe the one at the front can be a bit bigger, so let's scale this up. So it covers a bit more at the sides as well. Now the last thing I like to do is creating an environment object. And we're going to increase the strength to something around the 50% range. So I would say something in between 40 and 70. Let's go to the camera and render this to see if it works. So in my render you can see this is not sharp and that's the step I forgot. So let's go outside of the camera view. And if you look at the camera object, you can see this point right here, which is at the end. This is where the focus will be, so it's way behind the object. So instead we are going to the object tab and we can view through the camera if we want to and use this focus distance option and click at the center. Make sure you double check if it is not going all the way through there and pointing to the back, but it should be at the front. And now let's render again. Now you could add any kind of background behind this, but I actually recommend rendering this as a transparent PNG so you can put any background in this on Photoshop for example. That will save you a lot of rendering time and it is way more dynamic to experiment with a lot of stuff. To create this transparent PNG we need to go to the render settings and in here under the save options we need to make sure it is actually a PNG which will be exported and we also need to make sure we have the alpha channel enabled. That way we will get the perfect transparent PNG. So I think that's all you need to know to get started with your own experiments. You can use mine on the Patreon page to get started or just do you. And with that being said I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.